So we had this massive scare in the monster pond the other day with the leak that we ended up finding and I patched. So today we're gonna go ahead and talk about you know how I f found the leak and what exactly I know about it because it's kind of hard to believe that this thing just popped up overnight. And you know how leak of that size for these size fish that would mean no bueno. So with having this pond for you know years and years and years, we've been in this house for what 13 years. So you know as time goes on it becomes a little bit easier for you to know exactly what's going on. There was one instance probably about uh, maybe two, maybe three years ago that there was a small leak in the overflow of the, this pond. It was maybe about the size of my pinky finger and I was able to patch it really, really quick. But many of you are probably thinking, how did that happen? Well, when it comes to construction of swimming pools, on this backside, sometimes around this outside edge, there is like a false, you know, channel that they can use to guide water if, you know, the, the walls end up failing or whatnot. And most of the time, builders for uh, pools, they don't really reinforce the overflows. So you know what, that they might have a couple inch thick walls all the way around, but when it comes to the overflow, that's where a lot of people usually cheap out. So that there could mean there's only a half inch of you know cement or mortar or whatever they're using on the overflow, and it's one of your weakest points when it comes to swimming pools. Look at this, we've got dragonflies inside of the fish room. Look at that beauty. Oh my goodness. So I never get to get this close and up and personal with a lot of our fish because they are moving, but this dragonfly is a pretty little bugger. <laughs> all right, it's just neat. We have all these tropical plants here and it's just neat to see, you know, nature taking over. Most of the time we've got that back door open or the side door. We've got the big exhaust fan up top. And so it's not uncommon to find birds in here, dragonflies, you know, whatever it might be. He just landed down here on this fern now. So we're going to let him be and we're going to go back to talking about this filter. So you guys can probably imagine that it's very, very hard to find a leak inside this overflow. So I didn't just start there. But going back to that small leak I found, you know, a couple years back, it was, you know, just a small leak. It took me about three or four days to find it. I literally shut the pond off and let this thing leak for days and days and days before I figured out that it stopped at a certain point. And it stopped, you know, probably about three inches above the overflow to where if I had it where it's at right now, it would be, be stopped. There was no water leaking, but if I filled it up more, then water started to leak. So I knew at some point where this water level currently is in the pond, I got my mask on, I went in the pool, I inspected all of these walls, behind rocks, behind the walls, everywhere. I found nothing. I came to the overflow box, and like I said, I found this little tiny itty bitty hole inside that box. So I went ahead and patched that. And it's been great for, you know, years now. Haven't even thought about it. But now, once we got this huge leak, that was a lot of water that we were losing. You know, three, 4,000 gallons of water a day. Now, when you pour that out on to, to the ground, that can definitely make your yard sloppy and messy and wet all over. So, you know, when I, I was trying to find this leak, I'm like, it's probably highly unlikely that either of these walls cracked without a sure sign tell from the outside. Like if that back wall cracked, you would see some sort of catastrophic event that would make that wall crack. So I knew I found this leak within an hour. Literally what I did, shut off the, the pumps, I drained it down to the bottom of the overflow to where it was just a little itty bit bit of water right underneath of it. And then I was able to see it, it drained down and I, I seen water emptying out in the overflow and hardly anything pouring over. So I knew there was a hole 
in that overflow box that was pretty large. Once I stuck my hand down in there and started feeling around, I was able to find about a two inch hole. And I stuck my fingers inside and felt that the whole back side of the overflow was actually hollow. So I did a temporary patch on it for the time being and it is 100% holding just fine. You know, catastrophe averted. But I know when we go ahead and drain this and we do the universal rock back on the back wall, redo all these rocks, and we make this more habitable and fun for these fish, that's going to be an amazing transformation on this monster pond. So when that time comes, I'm gonna go ahead take you know a chit chisel and chisel out the back side of that overflow box and then i'm going to reform and re-pour knowing that my pour will be 100 percent solid and not trust that overflow because obviously the pool builders when that they, they, they built it it lasted however old this pool is we don't know when it, it was built i can go, go to city hall and find the permits for it but it held up this long, but that is one of the areas that they cheated by on and they didn't do as well as they could have. But I know the prep problem's there, so that's pretty much how I was able to find it and fix it. You know, many pe people ask, well, did you guys plan for this slab and how do you have this much weight of water on this concrete? Talking about the fish room and this pond room here. Well, this is actually a four inch reinforced slab and it can hold a lot of weight, but we do have a lot of water on this pool deck. But, you know, do, doing the calculations on it, plus it's towards the outside edge above a, you know, a, a block wall out there. So it's taken a lot of the, the load off of this floor slab. So we are able to have these tanks here and not have to worry about it. Take a look at these clown knives in here they are all healing up getting along the royal is eating phenomenally you can see he got all scratched up from trying to get under the cave i since fixed it i see his fins growing back out from that guy getting into a fight with them and all them scratches on his side are starting to heal up he looks much much better as well so it's always nice when uh you do something for them and your plan works. This little Dorado's loving life in this 700 gallon. He is kind of a special needs. He's almost blind in both eyes. He's missing an eye on one side and that eye is messed up on his right side. So I have him in here to get a little bit of special care. What's an OFR video without some fish updates? So you guys seen on the reels or the shorts, wherever you're watching it at, I got this new awesome piece of driftwood in here and I, you know, put some smaller ones in here. Sorry for the, the, the glare guys. I do have better le lenses coming to see if that will help with the camera. But I found this other piece over here. This thing looks absolutely radical. So I'm thinking about putting this piece and that piece in there as two different center pieces and pulling the rest of this wood out, maybe using that in the Pleco tank. I've been taking the plastic decorations out and replacing it with more driftwood, making it a little bit more natural in every single tank that I possibly can. Um, we found a leak in the pond room. So this big barrel, we had this hose coming down, you know, wound up back there and it was squirting against the wall, not visible from here, going down and getting the floor wet. Plus we flood it all the time. So it is a little bit hard to find out exactly where these leaks are coming from, but we've got that fixed as of today. So this should dry up. All of these carpets should dry up and all the water underneath this tank here. Because we've just been flooding it, you know, sometimes we overfill tanks, you know, accidents happen. But I brought you guys in here to show you. We got rid of one of the tanks up front. Um, we had a little problem up there, so we took down the tank, but I took all the driftwood out of that tank. They had live plants attached to them. So I tossed them in here wi willy-nilly, but I got, I'm going to go in here and redecorate all of this wood here and make this look like more of a showpiece. This is the grow out. That Goliath tiger fish is going on another growth spurt. This little red tail tat is being highly aggressive. 
everyone else in here seems to be doing well on the, the, the same time, but we've got this as a planet tank, this as a planet tank, and of course, planet tank over here. So where I can, I go ahead and put live plants. The clown loach horde is doing amazing. Everyone seems to be thriving in this tank. We got that beautiful geo in, in here. Oh my God, that thing is so pretty. I love watching the clown lo loaches just swarm all over the tank. The big head carp are starting to put some size on them. This uh, African arowana comes up and fan feeds all the time. Look how cool he is. One of my favorite fish in the collection here. Well, I've got a lot more work to do. We gotta get in this tank and I'm gonna rescape this entire tank here. I am, you know, tired of having these tanks look like crap as of lately. So we're getting in here and renovating them all. And then we're gonna move on to the next project. So you guys won't wanna miss that one. Lots of big things coming for Ohio Fish Rescue. You guys are going to love it. I'll catch you in the next video. Stay fishy, my friends.